Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday, and welcome back to Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Uh, the sun is shining where I am today. I am happy that it's Wednesday. It's like the middle of the week. You still have time to get some things done that you may have been putting off and still stick with your plan of getting it into your week. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about, last week I talked about answering questions that will lead you to become a six-figure colorist. And one of the other questions that I get a lot, more than anything, and that I also see on, you know, 90% of the posts on Facebook forums on hair color is toning and glazing. Uh, people are frustrated trying to get that <clears throat> pale, pale platinum blonde and not have it drop too deep, not have it get too muddy. There's so much to that. Um, I can't possibly talk about it in one coffee chat, but I did want to start to talk about it and introduce, if you haven't followed me, um, I am creating an online course for hair colorists. It's called Secrets of a Six Figure Colorist. And included in the course is all of the things that have taken me 32 years of you know, stalking famous colorists and traveling all over the country and Europe trying to figure out things that I saw on other people's Instagram and Facebook. You know, How did they do that? How did they get that seamless blend? How did they get that tone so on point? And it took a really long time for me to figure all that out. And now my job is to pay it forward and share it with other people much simpler and put it all in one spot. So the course launches on January 20th. So there's still time to join. I will not be um, offering it again until June. So if you've been kind of on the fence about joining, I hope that you'll just Take the leap of faith and do it. You will not be sorry. You need to educate yourself. The, the price of this course is so much less than even a one day look and learn that I've gone to to learn this information. One of the many, many things that I attended was Tracy Cunningham at the Redken Exchange. I had been obsessed with Tracy Cunningham and was determined to have to teach me something. As soon as I saw JLo's color and um, she did Fergie for the Super Bowl. That's when I became aware of who Tracy was and have been following her ever since. So that one event in New York City was $1,200 just for the ticket. It was a huge classroom with hundreds of people. We were far away watching on a screen. It's kind of like going to a concert and being in the nosebleeds and feeling like you should have just watched the video at home on you know, your computer. Uh, she's great and her technique is great and has changed my career and has helped me to add a new tool to my toolbox as far as her technique. However, you know, the value of sitting that far away and not really being able to see, I think was triple what it should have been, but she's a famous colorist and she's able to charge that. So because I am just like you and I work in the salon every day. I wanted to keep this course affordable so that the most amount of people can receive the information. So I hope that, again, if you're on the fence, I hope you'll take the leap of faith because I am going to be closing the cart. The course launches on the 20th. So midnight on the 20th is going to be the last chance to get in on the course. So I added the link to uh, the opening of the <clears throat> coffee chat. Hopefully when you come back on to watch the replay, it'll be on there. Um, I also, I'm not sure if Michelle <clears throat> is on here. I have um, someone who's amazing at creating um, advertising for me on Facebook and she's hopefully on here. I didn't hear back from her, but um, I'm hoping to be able to grab you guys um, in my many chat so that I can reach out to you if you don't subscribe to my email. If you want to stay in touch with me and get more information about classes, both in person and virtual and this course, just type in the word color in the comments and then hopefully Michelle's on here and she can set me up so that I can get in touch with you through many chat. So that's all the, uh, the homework that I had to set up here before I get started because once I start talking about color, I will forget to do all that. So most people are struggling with toners and glazes. And the way that I thought about this morning, how can I make it 
so easy to follow and user friendly is lipstick. When I was putting this lipstick on this morning, I was thinking to myself as I'm putting it on, wow, this really looks different on my niece when I asked her, what color is your lipstick? I love it. You look amazing. She bought it for me for Christmas. It's a Kylie Jenner, one of those all day matte lip glosses. I love it. I still wear it, but it looks completely different on me than it does on my niece, that it would on my sister, that it would on another person. Every single person that puts this exact lipstick on looks different. Did you ever buy perfume? You know, a client will come in and you're like, oh my God, you smell amazing. What is that perfume? And if you're anything like me, I go right home, I go online, I order a you know, ginormous bottle because it smelled so amazing on that client. And I can't wait until it comes and it comes in the mail and I rip open the box and I spray it on. I'm like, oh my God, did I get a bad batch or something? Like, why does this perfume not smell the way it did on that client? And the reason is we all have things in our own bodies that are completely different from one another. And why am I talking about perfume when I should be talking about hair color? Because it's something that you can relate to. I'm sure you have bottles and bottles of perfume that you thought sounded like a great idea and that it smelled differently on you. The lipstick that my niece bought me looks completely different on me. I have smaller lips. I don't even have an upper lip. <laughs> I need to get some, some lips injections. Um, so my natural pigment of my lips is different than my niece. So the base that this lipstick is going over is different than my niece. So of course, what I'm bringing to the table is my natural lip. And then what this lipstick brings is a combination of my natural lip and the artificial color. So can you see how that relates to hair color? People will be on these discussion boards on Facebook and someone will have a beautiful, awesome tone to a balayage or a root melt, something where the, where the people are saying, wow, that's gorgeous, that's gorgeous, formula please, formula please, formula please. And everyone gets so mad when the person who posted that actual post isn't so quick to give the formula. It's not because they're being stingy, it doesn't matter. You could take the same exact, weigh it on a scale, measure it, stand right next to that person, and do that whole concoction and put it on my hair, and it's gonna look completely different than that model on that post. So I think that's what people forget the most in toning, and toning and glazing are the same thing, for starters. People get caught up in the terminology. Toning was prior to, I would say, 1999 or the year 2000, everything was toner and toning because that was the old school verbiage. And then when people started to use Redken Shades EQ, their, their tagline is the um, hair color is so gentle it thinks it's a conditioner or it acts like a conditioner. So they just wanted to change the verbiage and modernize it and started saying glazing versus toning. But it is the same thing. So the chemical makeup of your glazes, it's, if it's liquid, it's much more sheer coverage. And up until a certain point, if you're an old school colorist like myself, the Redken Shades EQ didn't used to have the background color that it has now. So that has been a learning curve for myself, even though I was a confident glazer before, now I'm finding that I have to behave a little bit differently because of this background color. So let me explain. So most of us, you know, we have experience. We don't refer to the Redken chart. We don't read anything. We just start dumping things into a bowl. We, you know, don't measure as exact and all that. So um, the, the background color in the Shades EQ might surprise you. A lot of people will not do uh, an N series in the <clears throat> Shades EQ when they want to glaze someone because they think it's gonna be too warm because it's a neutral. So we know in permanent hair color when we're lifting and we use neutral, 
the neutral welcomes all the natural underlying pigment that comes along mm -hmm. with lightening the hair. So that can be confusing. We can uh, look at neutral as warm. So people will say, well, I don't want to use an end by itself because it's going to be too warm. But the base of the end series in Redken Shades EQ is blue violet. So it's actually a cool tone. And what's nice about it is it's a balanced cool tone. It's not a silver or violet, straight violet background. It is more neutral, but it is cool. So most times I will go in with just an N because that's all I need. I just want to kick out a little bit of that touch of urine yellow in there, but that's something important to know. The GN in Redken, I think a lot of people confuse GN. Uh, I think people think that it's a really strong green, and it's not. The G stands for green, but the, the secondary color is yellow. So the GN, you would think, well, if N is blue-violet and G is green, then that would be like the coolest of cool color. That would be an awesome color because it's going to kick out the red, it's going to kick out the orange, it's got the green, the violet, and the blue in there. So how could you go wrong? But if you pay attention to the chart, the GN is green yellow. So it's not going to be a really strong green. So when you go to get red out of the hair and you look at the color wheel and you see that you need green, you're actually better off building a true green by using a G in Shades EQ mixed with a B. So G and B, we know that blue and yellow makes green. So I hope that tip helps. That helps me a lot uh, when I learned that because I was really expecting more of the GN than it's able to give me. And then it made sense that if it has a yellow background, it's not going to be as strong to kick out that red. And B, boy, I think is another um, tone that people perceive differently than it actually is. The base of NB is red violet. So people will reach for NB when they're like, oh, I want it to be, you know, it's pale yellow, but I want it to be more champagne and it's natural beige or natural brown, whatever you perceive that. NB to stand for, find out what it really is. And when you find out that it's red violet, you have to know that when you're adding red and you know violet, which is like a pale purple, you're going to get, yes, champagne is more violet, but not really red. So the NBs can be a little bit warmer than you think they're going to be. Um, the, the best advice that I give you, and I give into all my classes, I purchased these swatches. These are from Pivot Point. I got these with my Wella points, which I am such a cherry picker. I do not work for any manufacturer. So I mentioned Wella and Red and Shades EQ a lot just because that's what I use in the salon. So when people watch my videos and they see me at hair shows, they assume that I'm an affiliate for them and I'm trying to sell the product. That's not true. This is this was my big reward for the thousands and thousands of dollars of Wella that I purchased, I got these little swatches. But they're useful for me in my classes. So they have all the different levels. This one is the palest. This is if you're lucky enough to get the hair super pale blonde. And then the next one is, I think, the most common thing that we struggle with. It's like that just enough yellow to piss you off and you want to get it out of the hair but you don't want to take away the brightness of the blonde. And then this one starts to get into the real demon that starts to be just, just orange enough to fight. See how pink my skin is? And when I put that next to my skin, it makes me look ruddy. It shows my rosacea. It changes my whole tone, making me look blanche. So that's the next step. And then after that is you know, this is the color that they come in when they think that they're a genius and they go down the aisle at Target and they buy a home ombre kit and they end up this color. So why am I showing you this? A glaze slash toner slash 
shades EQ gloss, whatever you want to call it, can only do the job of the level that it is. And I think the top mistakes in glazing and toning are, I think number one is not leaving it on long enough. And I was 100% guilty of this up until about six months ago. Shades EQ and a lot of other lines, but especially Shades EQ, when it starts to develop, you crap your pants. You're looking at the head, you know, they're developing, it's processing, and you just did an hour and a half worth of beautiful blonde that you want to keep bright. But you just wanted to blur out those foil lines and give it a little bit of more tonality. So you mix a level nine in Shades EQ. You even put clear into it because you were afraid the nine was going to drop too much. And you put it all over their head and you set the timer and you really want to give it 20 minutes because you know you're supposed to. And you're watching it and you're like, oh crap, her highlights are gone. I do it all the time still, I panic. I'm looking at it and I'm like, I really should get this off. Maybe she was overly porous. Maybe her hair is just really grabbing on to this tone. Oh my gosh, she's gonna look like Marge Simpson. She's gonna be blue. I better get it off. And then you hit the water at the sink and you're like, oh, thank God I took it off. Look how dark this looks. She's going to kill me. And you're thinking, which I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what do I have in my cabinet that I can throw on this to lift this off because I just screwed up and took away all of her blonde. And then you take her over to your styling chair and you start to dry the hair and you're like, oh man, that would have been gorgeous if I would have just left it the hell alone. So don't panic when you see that tone. When to panic is if you formulated it improperly and you dropped it down too low. That's a whole different story. But a level nine can only be a level nine even if you leave it on 20 minutes. So that's, I think, the most common thing. And then people formulating above the level, like someone going in on this swatch and saying, you know, oh, I saw on a forum the other day that this girl used the new... Shades EQ 9NA, and it was so pretty, and it really kicked that orange out, so I'm going to use that, but this is not a level 9. So you're going to put it on here, and it's going to get nice and blue, and you're going to be like, oh my god, this is great. And it'll probably, you know, maybe mute the orange a tiny bit, but it's not going to neutralize it because it's on the wrong level. So that's the other big issue is formulating too light. The other one is formulating too cool not understanding the background of the glaze and it has a heavy background that you're not aware of and it's overtoned into that muddy murky artificial uh, color so that's another thing um hair being too wet i see people being super lazy about their glazing i don't want to step on any toes a lot of educators teach just dump it on at the sink and it's fine. I, I completely disagree with that. I think as a professional and to show the client that it is a secondary service that requires our expertise in formulating, our expertise in applying. Sometimes the hair didn't lighten perfectly even, so there's other areas. One area might have a little bit more of the brighter orangey color and there may be areas that she's actually white. So if you're dumping this universal glaze all over the head at the sink roots to ends and just smushing it, you see all those Instagram videos, it looks so pretty with people sliding their fingers through and showing you the glazing. But I think that taking the client to your chair, drying it a little bit so that you can actually see what's going on and what you're trying to neutralize, and then applying it at the chair as, as you would apply a root touch up, I think you're going to be able to charge more because the client realizes, wow, she's going through all the same work that she did for my initial root color on this color, and that therefore you're able to charge what you're worth for the glaze. So let me see if there's any comments. Hi, Jack Travis. So can, can a bunch of people just comment color so that I know if my um, Facebook coordinator person is on here doing my mini chat, just comment color in the comments for me. That would be awesome. Um, so different lines of color. A 
Joyco Let Me Shine. I took a class with a great educator in Philadelphia. I brought him in from, I forget where he's from, somewhere in the Midwest. And he was teaching us how to root shadow over fresh highlights. And literally my heart was stopping the way that he was formulating. And one of my longtime clients who, if you follow me, you've seen her picture. She's on my PowerPoint at all of my hair show slides. Um, she went somewhere else. She got turned very blarange. She's on my Instagram. Jump on to Instagram and follow me. It's Laney Cake, L-A-I-N-E-Y-C-A-K-E -E on Instagram. If you scroll down and look at her before and after, she had like, you know, orange roots and then like yellow orange and then orange patches and then there was muddy patches where they tried to correct it and it went overtoned in those areas. And um, he used her as a model and did a phenomenal job on her hair. And he did all these fresh highlights. He did what I call my bullshit balayage technique. He piloted up to the root and then in between he teased and paint it like balayage, but put it into a foil. And that technique is also covered in this course in detail. I do a whole video of bullshit balayage. So afterwards, we were at this beauty school that was brand new and their water pressure was awful and they only had two sinks and we had like seven models going at the same time because we all did hands-on models. So she's my client, you know, she's trusting me that I wouldn't let her model for this person if I didn't think he was going to do an amazing job on her hair. And he formulated it to, my hair looks really dark today on this, I don't know why that is. It looks really, really dark. It's not this dark. Um, but the key in your root shadows is formulating to the client's natural level. And that's important, I'm gonna say it again. We tend to formulate the root shadow to the actual color that we want to see at that root, but the hair is brought up pale and then you're dropping it back down. So again, just like the lipstick, it's where the color is lifted to with the addition of the color that you're putting on it is what it will drop to. So he formulated this model 5NA at her roots and she wanted to be bright blonde. So I'm like, oh my God, she's going to have a heart attack when she sees her roots. He dropped her down to look too dark. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so muddy. It's going to hit the ends. I was in sheer panic. And then I realized after I got back to the salon, and of course I brought in all this Joy Code Lumi Shine because it looked so amazing on her and she's my client. I'm like, okay, I want to be able to keep up with what he did. And then I realized that a level five, it was five NA in um, Lumi Shine behaves like a Redken seven. So that's another big thing that you have to know. You have to either buy these swatches or, you know, if someone gets a major haircut and has a lot of blonde fall off of their head and it's long enough, they can put a rubber band around it. I find I'm lazy and I like to have them made for me. I also, another um, resource is internationalhairimporters.com, um, or I'm sorry, it's not .com. <clears throat> if you Google International Hair Importers New York, the phone number will come up. I believe they don't have a website. But you can call them and say, hi, I want hair color swatches. I always get 50% level 5 natural, 50% gray because that allows me, that's pretty much the, the most common thing that I see in the salon when I'm doing color is the client's natural level five. They have a certain percentage of gray and that's what I'm dealing with. But you can say 10% gray, 90% level four, level two, level one, any level. And it comes where these are all attached. It's like one row of the same color hair and then I cut them into these little things, but do yourself a favor in this course, I'm going to do it for you. You're going to see a module in my course where I take these swatches and I show you like, this is pale blonde. And if you want, you know, a silver tone, this is what shades you could use and why, like I'm going to break down why, why this swatch is going to look different than this swatch with the same exact color. 
So if you don't want to deal with doing all this, but you really want to understand glazing and toning for, you know, forever and not have to deal with that ever again, then all you have to do is click the button, take the course, and it's done for you. If you're the type of person that learns more from doing, then buy the hair swatches. But the hair swatches are expensive. So you may end up spending almost the same amount of money doing this yourself because you have to buy the hair swatches, you have to buy all the hair color to do the hair swatches, and it's time you've taken away from being behind the chair. So to me, time is money, and I'm an educator. So for me, this benefits me in my course. So it's worth it for me to take the time to do all those swatches, but it may not be for you. So it just depends what you have more of, time or money, and that's how to decide whether this is for you. Um, the NA series in Shades EQ is very, very blue. So you want to be careful. It's amazing. I love it. But you really want to be aware of that. I think it's a little misleading in the name of it. Because an NA, traditionally in most lines, is natural as the primary part of the, you know, 75% of the formula is usually the first letter. And then 25% is the second. So if I didn't know any different, and I went in and said, oh, NA, perfect, it's a neutral with ash, so I don't have to do an N and a V, or an N and a B, or an N and any other ash. It's all pre-mixed for me. But I don't think there's much neutral in there. Um, I think it's you know a lot, a lot of blue. So you can really have some mishaps with that new line, but it's amazing because we need it a really blue. Color, but you just need to know that, that pretend that the end isn't even there almost and that you're using the strongest blue that you can use. Um, the I talked about the GN, right? Adding the G and the B to make um, a green versus doing the GN. I did the natural, the national hair color imports. I think that is... Everything that I wanted to cover as far as the bases. Um, root shadowing, in my opinion, has been the best, most exciting thing to come along in hair color in a long time. For me, starting out, when I was in beauty school, we had to learn on the dreaded cap. And it hurt, and it was annoying to do because you're just digging this thing in people's skull and you're scratching their scalp and you're pulling these little hairs out, but you had no idea where that blonde was going to land. Where in foil, we can say, okay, I want a ribbon here, I want a ribbon here. It's more deliberate and better placement. So as far as technology and techniques and how far we've come, when I was getting out of beauty school, foiling was just starting to get popular. So that was a learning curve that we had to get used to you had the slipping and sliding of the foils. You had taking too much of a section, going up too high with your brush, putting it under heat, having spelling, and leaving bleeds on the scalp. So fast forward to now, for me, this trend of highlighting, balayaging, teasing to highlight, all of these new things are so amazing and look so much better and so much more natural. When I think back, to the clients that I had that wanted those highlights that looked like they shot out of their skull. They wanted them so close to the scalp and it was like line, 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 line. It looked ridiculous. And I look back at pictures and I think, wow, I don't know who the first person was that decided this was a great idea to do a root shadow, but thank you, whoever you are, because it has completely changed my game behind the chair. I have people coming in after six months of not seeing me, like it was starting to make me paranoid in the beginning when I first started to do root shadows. I was like, wow, where's Jill been? Like I haven't seen her, I usually see her every eight weeks. Why is she not here? Did she go to her niece that became a hairdresser? Like you start to tell a story in your head of where these people went. And suddenly I would see her on my book after like five, six months. And you'll see in the course, I do my niece's hair. And I think it was like April that I did her for the first time. And then the next video is September. And when I'm showing the before and I tilt her head down to the camera, it looks like she was just done. And that's because of root shadowing. So if you're not doing root shadowing, if you don't know what root shadowing is, 
if you're not taking advantage of that amazing technique, then you really need to take this course. And as always, this is my bigger signature course. If you followed me for any amount of time, you know that I started out teaching and my commitment was to the new hairdresser just getting out of beauty school, where you don't really understand the color wheel. You don't know why you need to use green when you're trying to counteract red. What color you use and why, what level, what tone. That's not what this course is. This course is for the experienced stylist that understands the color wheel, has been doing color behind the chair for, I would say, at least four to five years. You understand formulation. You're already doing your root touch-ups, your gray coverage, your basic highlights, all that. But you're in a rut, and you want to make more money, and you don't know how to do it. I named it Secrets of a Six-Figure Colorist because doing these techniques and changing the way that I do my pricing, my marketing, my branding, all of that comes into play in getting to that six-figure level. So if what I'm saying to you about toning and glazing, if you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what you're talking about, about background color and formulation, still look forward to this course, but first reach out to me and say, I need your more basic, my first course is Hair Color Simplified, and that is where I talk about what is permanent color, what is demi-permanent color? When and why to use a demi? How to formulate differently for demi than you do for permanent? I also include that in this as well because I think that demi-permanent color is the most misunderstood, underutilized category in our industry. I use it 80% of my day I'm using demi. So I had to include that even with this advanced course because I think even the most advanced colorist are still using permanent color to tone, they're still using permanent color to low light, and they're still using permanent color um, on people's hair that don't need it to cover gray. And then they're constantly asking questions about why is my blonde fading out so orange? What can I do to get rid of that orange? What you can do is not create the orange in the first place. So thank you everyone for listening. I hope that I didn't not answer anybody's questions. Um, oh, I mean, I like hearing that the 1B changed your life. That's awesome. Um, so I see Dilma is in the class. Dilma is coming for a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm excited about that. So thank you guys for listening. And as always, reach out. If I didn't get to any of your questions, always reach out because it can lead to me doing an exciting, interesting topic on next Wednesday's Color Chat. So keep in touch, and I will see you guys on the next Coffee and Colorful Conversation. Have a great day.